Hello students, welcome to part 3 of chapter 8 of business studies. The name of the chapter is Sources of Business Finance. In this chapter, we are trying to understand how a business arranges funds for its operations, whether for short term requirements or for long term requirements. In the first two parts of the chapter, we have seen that a firm can raise funds or arrange them from various sources. We have already talked about several sources of finances. Today, we will talk about a few more prominent sources of finance available for firms, particularly in India. Let us begin the class. The next source of funds is commercial banks. Commercial banks are a very, very common and popular source of funds and financing in India. Commercial banks offer funds for varied purposes, but they usually offer funds for short to medium duration. Although some banks in India have started extending loans for longer periods, but generally they still stick to medium term finances. The borrower is usually required to provide some security or some asset in the form of a mortgage or a security on the basis of which the banks offer loans. Merits of loans offered by commercial banks are that, first of all, they provide timely assistance to business. When a business requires loans and if it fulfills all the eligibility criteria, it can get loans very easily and on time. Secondly, the documents that a firm is required to submit while borrowing are kept confidential so that ensures secrecy of the business. Third, the formalities such as issue of prospectors and underwriting etc which are involved in issuing shares are not there in the case of a bank loan. So we can say that bank loans are an easier source of finance. But bank loans too have their limitations. First of all, as we have said, these funds are usually available for short and medium term. These are not available for long term requirements of the businesses. Secondly, banks make detailed investigation into the company's affairs before giving them loans. They may ask for heavy security also. This makes uh, this particular source a little more rigid and a little less popular. In some cases, the terms and conditions imposed by banks are really harsh. For example, banks may put restrictions on the sale or use of mortgaged assets, which creates a hindrance for the companies or firms in going to the banks for taking loans. That is why besides commercial banks, Governments in India have set up several specific institutions, several other financial institutions that cater to the financial needs of the industrial sector in India and not just industries, basically the entire economy, the entire producer segment. There are several such financial institutions. These institutions not only provide loans, they also provide owner's capital, they also provide various sorts of assistances, be it technical or be it informational. These institutions basically are a good form or source of training for certain small enterprises as well. These institutions provide long term and medium term funds, so they do fulfill almost all needs of the companies or firms. Since these institutions help in promoting the industrial development of the country by supporting small to medium to large companies, by training them, by assisting them, that's why these institutions are also known as development banks. There are several development banks in India, you must have heard a couple of names around you. Merits of financial institutions are that they provide long term finance which is not provided by commercial banks. Second, they provide financial manager and technical advice. Third, repayment of loan to these institutions can be made in very easy installments. So it does not prove to be much of a burden for the business. The funds are made available even during 
tough times even during the periods of depression when other sources are not available because these firms these institutions basically focus on helping on helping the businesses develop so they do provide funds and loans even in those times when there is a depression in the economy that is why these are really important especially for small or medium sized businesses in india but these two have certain limitations number one these follow rigid criteria for granting loans sometimes too many formalities make their procedure very time consuming and expensive secondly they also impose certain restrictions especially restrictions on dividend payment they try and control how the company operates how much dividend can it give to its shareholders so that is an hindrance or a drawback from the perspective of the company these institutions may have their nominees also on the board of directors of the borrowing company this is also you know possible they set up their nominees on the board of the borrowing company and that really con starts controlling the company so the company or its owners or management start feeling restricted as of now whatever sources of funds we've seen they were all focused on the domestic market of the country domestically when a firm in india wants to raise funds it can choose any of those sources that we've seen till now but ever since globalization took place especially in, in india in 1991 when the new economic policy was launched it was implemented the country saw liberalization privatization globalization particularly globalization you know because it allows people it allows companies it allows you know investment capital and, and everything to travel cross border now institutions companies people from one country can easily trade and operate in other countries when such a thing is happening in other industries why would it not happen in finance industry that's why now even in india we have international financing options indian companies can opt for international finance or sources of international finance some of the most prominent or common sources of international finance are number 1 commercial banks there are many you know international commercial banks which are now operating in india as, as well and even if a bank is not operating in india even if it is completely a foreign based bank indian companies with good reputation can approach such foreign banks as well apart from banks there are international development banks there are international agencies that offer funds or loans to companies all over the globe so even indian companies can approach those development banks lastly now indian companies even have access to international capital markets such as the share market indian companies can raise funds from these international capital markets which could be in indian rupee as well as in foreign currency some of the prominent financial instruments used for acquiring funds through international capital markets are as follows number 1 gdrs gdrs are global deposit receipts it is basically a negotiable instrument which can be traded freely like any other security we've seen various securities whether shares or debentures or commercial papers etc gdrs are also security like that they are negotiable and they can be traded freely if we talk about the indian context then in indian context a gdr is basically an instrument which is issued abroad by an indian company to raise funds in some foreign currency so an indian company can issue a gdr abroad which means to any other country outside india in their foreign currency in their own currency it has to get the gdrs listed and traded on a foreign stock exchange a holder of the gdr which means a person in that particular country can buy or subscribe to the gdr this particular holder can at any time convert that gdr into the number of shares it represents so each gdr basically represents a certain number of shares if a person is holding a gdr 
he or she can easily trade that JDR and get it converted into the particular number of shares it represents. Although GDRs give a particular number of shares to their holders, yet they do not carry any voting rights. They are not exactly sh shares, they are just a representation of shares and they do not carry any voting rights, but they carry rights for dividend and capital appreciation. Which means if their value increases, people can sell them at higher value, which will help them in appreciating their capital. Many Indian companies, especially those companies which have a name globally, nowadays issue GDRs and raise funds through the help of GDRs. Just like GDRs, we have ADRs. ADRs are American Depository Receipts. American Depository Receipts are issued by an American company. They can be bought and sold only among American people. It is similar to GDR except that it is entirely based and operated in America. Third, Indian Depository Receipts. So an Indian Depository Receipts is also quite similar to an ADR. The difference being that an Indian Depository Receipt is denominated in Indian Rupee and it is created by an Indian Depository. So basically foreign companies who want to raise funds from India, they use IDRs to raise funds in Indian securities market. Foreign companies, so now just try and compare, Indian companies can issue GDRs abroad and similarly foreign companies can use IDRs in India to raise funds from India. IDR is a specific Indian version of the global depository receipts. These were major sources for companies to raise funds through share markets or capital markets of other countries. As of now, we have seen almost all types of sources or sources of funds available to a company. But you know, we know that whenever there is an abundance of choice, it creates confusion also. When a company has so many options, which option should it choose? What should it be looking at while choosing this particular option? So whenever a company is making a choice, it has to consider a lot of factors because choice of funds, choice of source of funds is a very critical decision. It can have a long lasting impact on the profitability, on the liquidity of the company. Therefore, companies usually make a really valiant effort in making sure that they choose that particular source which is the most suitable for them. For this, they consider various factors. We will talk about five or six of them. The first factor that a company should consider is the cost. Usually there are two types of costs while raising funds. Number one, cost of procurement. For example, when a company is issuing shares, it has to issue a prospectus, it has to hire underwriters, bankers, brokers, etc that involves a lot of cost. Similarly, every instrument, every source has its own cost of procurement. Secondly, there is a cost of utilizing the funds, which in case of borrowing or debt is in the form of interest, in case of shares is in the form of dividends. So taking care of both these costs, looking at both these types of costs, a company has to see whether it wants to go with a high cost security or it wants to stay with a low cost security. Secondly, financial strength and stability of operations. Whenever a company is issuing any sort of security and raising funds through them, it will have an impact on the stability of operations of the company. Some sources do not really affect the operations of the company while some do. For example, if a company issues a dementia or takes a loan with a high interest rate, it will have to make sure that it has regular funds to pay regular interest and it has sufficient funds at the time of maturity to repay the principal. If it does not, you know, if a company is not strong enough and still goes for debt, it will be really bad for the company when it is required to pay either the interest or the principal. So a company has to see whether it is strong enough to 
take that burden of debt or not. Third, forms of organization and legal status. Now, not all companies or all firms can issue all types of securities, right? For example, shares, partnership firms, sole proprietors, they cannot issue shares, right? So, a company or a firm has to look at its organization, its form and its legal status also, depending upon which it can actually select. So, depending upon different types of organization, their options get limited. So, within those limited options they have to select depending upon the type of organization they have or they want to have. Then purpose and time period. So, we have seen some forms of finances are for short and medium term like commercial bank loans, some are for long term like shares and debentures. So, it is up to a company, it has to decide for what time duration and for what purpose is it requiring the funds and based on that it can decide where does it want to raise funds from. Next is the risk profile. A business should evaluate each of the source of finance in terms of the risk involved. For example, there is a lesser amount of risk involved in equity as neither the company has to repay equity until the company is getting wound up nor it has to pay a fixed dividend or interest on it. So, it is less risky when compared to debt. Similarly, every source of finance would have its own risk profile and a business is required to evaluate the risk attached with different sources of finance and looking at its own risk appetite, it should choose. If it is able to bear risk, then it can probably go with more risky instruments as well. But if it wants to be a little more conservative, it, if it wants to keep the risk low, then it should go with securities with lesser amount of risk. Finally, control is also a very important factor. If a company is issuing shares, particularly equity shares, then it will have to, you know, share the control, it will have to get its control diluted. So, if the existing shareholders, owners and management are, are okay with that, then they can go with shares. But if they do not want to share control, then they should avoid shares, particularly equity shares. So, as we see, there are so many things that a company has to consider. Looking at everything, looking at its purpose, looking at the time duration, looking at how much control it wants to keep, it has to decide which source is going to be good for the company. And based on everything, a wise decision should be taken. I hope all of you are able to understand that how important finance is for any form of business and how important it is to analyze and first of all know the different sources of funds that are available and then analyze, interpret, evaluate those sources and choose the best one for our business. Because a good source, a good amount of fund can really help the business go a long way. This was it from this particular chapter and from today's class. Thank you.